Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video we're going to be covering calculus two topics and this topic is going to be summations. Now summation is used everywhere in calculus two. It's not always used in this form but it's something that you need to know. It's, it's an integral part about learning how to do your integrations, right? So here we have four summation problems. We have the summation of four from the values of one to five. We have the summation of i from one to five and we have the summation of two i from 1 to 5 and then finally we have the summation of 2i plus 4 from 1 to 5. Now what this means is that we have to find the i term for each sum component, right? So here in the first one we have the value of 4, there's no uh, variable of the letter i. Usually we substitute the letter i with the values from 1 to 5 and create a summation process for each term that's created in the sequence of events. Now in this case we don't have an i so the only thing that happens is the constant number of 4 repeats 5 times and because it goes from 1 to 5 we have a repetition of the number 4 in sum 5 times. So in the first case when i is 1 we have the number 4 and I'm just putting this notation of i equals 1 on top so that we could keep track of the count of the summation. So when i is 1, the value is still 4 here for the constant. Plus, when i is equal to 2, we have another 4. And when i is equal to 3, we also have another 4. And when i is equivalent to 4, we have another 4. And finally, when i is 5, we have finally another 4. And here we see we're just adding 4 five times from one to five and we're just going to add the two the fours up right and uh, this becomes four times five right because we have five fours so if we just factor everything out we have four of them this is just uh, five fours so we're just going to put a five outside and this becomes twenty so the summation uh, from one to five for the number four is just twenty all right so I'm going to take this and put the, the solution to it on the left hand side here and I'm going to wipe this down so I can continue through these. Actually, I'll just continue working through these no problem. I'm just going to leave it on the board just as it is. In the next case, we don't have a constant number. We have the letter i. And what you do with the letter i is instead of writing the i up here where we see there's no i to manipulate, we're actually going to augment the i itself as we go in a summation. So every variable of i is going to change as the value of i changes, right? So in the case when i is equivalent to 1, we have a 1. And this i is then going to change for the second part of the summation. So we're going to add to this the value of i when it's 2 on its way to 5. And then we're going to add the value of 3 on its way to 5. And then again, the value of 4 on its way to 5. And finally, the value of 5. And here to get this sum, we see that we're just adding them, right? So we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 5 makes 15. And that's our summation for the letter of i, right? Now, in the next problem here, we have a couple different ways we can work with this problem. First of all, we have the summation of two i's, which is similar to the summation of just i, which Theoretically, if we have two i's, it should be double the value of just one i, right? So technically, we know the solution should be 30, but let's investigate how that 30 occurs. So in substituting the value of i on its way to 5 in summation, we'll start the series of the summation with the value of 2 times the value of i at 1 is just 1, plus 2 times the value of i, which is 2, plus 2 times the value of i, which turns to 3, plus 2 times the value of i, which is then 4, and finally, plus 2 times the value of i, which is 5. And now here we see that they all have a common factor, which is a 2. Similar to the first one, they all have a common factor of 4, and there's 5 of them. We factored out uh, we factored them all in and put the 5 outside and the 4 inside. Here we could take the 2 out of each one and we put the 2 outside and inside the parentheses we're going to have the summation. 
Now here we see the summation of the first set is the same as the inner summation here. And we know the inside is then 15. And finally, 2 times 15 makes 30. Right now, these summations are actually very much alike. So something we could have done to the summation before we started is factor out the common term, uh, the constant term, not the common term. So here, if we fix this summation so we could get a shortcut to the, the number 2 here, what we're going to do instead of just starting the summation is we're going to factor out the constant. And this is something you can do any time with a summation. The only time we don't want to do this is when we have only a constant, right? So in this case, with a variable, we can always factor out the constant term. So we're going to have the summation here with 5i equivalent to 1 with just the i inside. And we're going to keep the 2 outside. And by doing this, we see it's easier to do this problem once we have this number 2 finished because part 2 here, the inside, if we're multiplying these two, 2 times the value of the summation from 1 to 5 of i, we see as 15. And this gives us the same exact value we came to, right? 2 times 15, which gives us 30. And so that gives us a summation of 2i two, two from 1 to 5, all right? And this is something that's going to play a really key role in everything we do with summations when we start using the formulas of what we use in Riemann sums. So now let's move on to number 4. And number 4 we see is a component of 2i and 4. So we have the same summation limits from 1 to 5. And we're taking the summation of 2i plus the summation of 4. The summation of 2i we know is to be 30. The summation of, of 4 from 1 to 5 is also 20. So 20 plus 30 gives us 50. I'm just going to write that 50 here. And we'll just leave this here as a note for the solution. Now, let's get to the work of this, right? I'm going to wipe everything else off here so we can break down how to solve this kind of summation. And to break down the summation, what we're going to do is we're going to separate this summation into two pairs because we know we have the components ready. This was 20 up here. This was 30 down here. So let's see what we can do with this summation. We have the summation of 2i plus 4. And here our first step is going to be to separate the summation. And you're allowed to separate summations on pluses and minuses. And they separate the summation and then each summation is done independently. So the first thing we're going to have is the summation from 1 to 5. And we have here 2i plus summation from 1 to 5 of the value of 4. And now we're going we're gonna to factor out the constant term on this first summation here. And we're going to have 2 times the summation from 1 to 5 of just i plus the summation with the limits of 1 to 5 for the number 4. And here again, we're going to just take the sum of the first five terms from 1 to 5 and multiply it times 2. So we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. And here, this becomes a product, uh, I mean a sum of the first, uh, the first five terms of the constant 4, which are just 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. And here we know this to be 15, so we have 2 times the 15. And this we know to be 20. 4 fives give us 20. And here then we get 30 plus 20 is 50. And so that is the summation of this term. Now, these are the most generic forms of summation formulas we can use. However, there are formulas to solving the summations. So let's investigate some of these summations. And I'm going to leave the solutions to each of these up here so that we can compare the solutions to them. So for these, we have 20, 15, 30, and 50 here. So let's pull out the summation formulas now. And for those of you, you can go back on this video and go back to the beginning and see how the beginning works so that you could get used to the end of this and master the end of this. Uh, the summation formulas play a very key role in doing integration or the limit process of integrating. So here we're going to put an n. So the limits are going to go from 1 to n. And here we're going to consider that c is any constant term. So when we're doing a summation from 1 to any number n for any constant term, our formula is going to automatically be 
the constant times the number of summations that we're going to do, right? And when we have the term i, the summation of this is always going to be the number of summations we do, the n, times n plus 1, which is the next number after the number of summations, divided by 2. And this will always generally work too as well. And we're going to test these comparing them to the ones that we have already done over here. Finally, there are two more formulas that we're not going to use, but they very much work just as well as these first two do. And to do that, we're going to test them out before this video is over, all right? But I'm going to go ahead and leave these formulas up here because they're going to be very key in your understanding for what summations, for how summations work. And the next two terms are going to be when i is squared, which the formula for this is n times 2n plus 1 times n plus 1 divided by 6. And this gives us the summation of the square term from 1 to any number of summations that we go. And then finally we have the cube, the cube term. The summation of cube terms. And the formula for this one is going to be n squared times n plus 1 squared divided by 4. And this here, this formula where n represents the number of summations that we're completing, for the i cube term, when, whenever we're cubing a term and finding the sum of cube terms, we take the number of summations and we square it and add n plus 1 summation squared and divide it by 4. So we'll also practice one with these. I'll make the summations very small so that we could see how it's actually working without getting too lost in its interpretation because the first two here would be easy to see on how the interpretation works. Now if you remember before, before we got the 20, we had a 4 times 5. Uh, 5 times 4 actually because there were 5 4s adding up and so we're going to see how this plays a huge role in what we're about to do here. So in the first one here we have the summation of from 1 to 5 of the number 4. And here we see the, num the number that's the constant is the c, which is 4. So here I'll just put these parallel to each other. We have the n, the i equals 1, and the c here. And the formula for this becomes the c times the n. Now here we have the c is our 4, and the n is our 5. We're doing from 1 to 5, so this becomes 4 times 5, which is also 20. And so the formula is more or less a shortcut to how to do the summation. It's always accurate. It's been devised a long time ago by very intelligent individuals. And we see here it reflects the same exact work that we had in notation. So it's very useful. All right? Now let's try this i formula. We have the summation from 1 to 5 of i gives us 15. And let's see that in comparison to its formula. So we have here 5, uh, i equals 1 in the i here. And we see here we have the n summation of i equals 1 of i is n times n plus 1 over 2. And yes, this is a very familiar statistical formula, and this gives us sum of any term from 1 to whatever the number is. So here let's plug in our values as we have our n is 5, right? So we get 5 times 5 plus 1 divided by 2. And this becomes 5 times 6 divided by 2, which is 30 divided by 2. 30 divided by 2 is just 15. We see here this also gives us the same solution that we had in our summation. Now as far as the last two summations go, there's really no way that I can show you guys that these formulas are actually legitimate enough to work. So what I will do is I'll find the first few, sum, the first few terms of a summation from 1 to some number and then I'll compare those to these solutions, all right? So I'm going to do that now for both equations. So we'll, we'll do this with a very small number, as my brain cannot possibly compute something so large. I'll make the summations very small. So let's start with the i squared term. And if we're doing the i squared term, let's run this from 1 to 3. Maybe let's go to 4. That might be more interesting, all right? And here we have i squared. And here we have i is equivalent to 1. Now the formula for this, right, I'll write it right under it. We have the summation from i equals 1 to n. i squared is equivalent to n times 2n plus 1 times 
n plus 1 over 6. Now before we even use the formula, let's guarantee ourselves that this is going to work correctly by finding the first four terms of the summation. Now when i is 1 and it's squared, we have 1 squared. Plus when i is 2, we have 2 squared. When i is 3, it becomes 3 squared. When i is 4, we get 4 squared. So here we have 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16. 1 plus 9 is 10, 4 plus 16 is 20, so this is all going to give me 40, I mean 30, right? 10, 20, 10 plus 20 is 30. So here we have our valid summation, and we just did this the manual way, right? Well, here's the formula. Here's our n, our n is 4, right? So let's substitute our 4 into this formula and see if it gives us this 30. So we have 4 times... 2 times 4 plus 1 times 4 plus 1 over 6. And this here becomes 8 plus 1 is 9. So we have 4 times 9 times 5 divided by 6. Then finally, 4 times 9 is 36. And 36 divided by 6 is actually a perfect division. Let's get rid of that 6. And we're left with 6 times 5. 6 times 5, also 30. So we see here that the summation is valid, right? And the same would work for the last summation, right? So we have the i cubed term, all right? And you could just test this one out yourself. So feel free to try at home and stuff, all right? Thank you for watching.